What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Uh, still here in the book of Jonah, with Jonah chapter 2. In, in the end of chapter 1, we saw that uh, the other people on the ship threw Jonah overboard because that's what he said would cause the sea to become calm for them. They threw him into the sea, and uh, the sea became calm, and they greatly feared God because of it. And here in Jonah 2, we're going to see uh, Jonah's prayer from, uh, well, from Sheol. And this is uh, just like what we see in Revelation, Revelation 5 or Revelation 6 with the fifth seal. The prayers from under the altar, those who have died. And matter of fact, I'll just pull that up uh, so we can go through that too. But uh, we're going to see Jonah's prayer here. All right. Then Jonah prayed to Yahuwah, his God, from the stomach of the fish. And he said, and we're going to see at this point, he was already, he was already dead. His, his soul was crying out. Then Jonah prayed to Yahuwah, his God, from the stomach of the fish. And he said, I called out in my distress to Yahuwah. And he answered me. I cried for help. From the depths of Sheol. So he was in Sheol. He was, uh, his soul was in Sheol. His body died. His soul was in Sheol. I cried out of my distress to Yahuwah. And he answered me. I cried for help from the depth of Sheol. You heard my voice. For you would cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the current engulfed me. All your breakers and billows passed over me. So I said, I have been expelled from your sight. Nevertheless, I will look again towards your holy temple. Water encompassed me to the point of death. And actually, if you pull that up in the inner linear, it says water engulfed me or surrounded me to my soul. The great deep engulfed me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I descended to the roots of the mountains. The earth with its bars was around me forever. But you brought up my life from the pit, which is Sheol. The earth with its bars was around me forever. But you brought up my life from the pit, O Yahuwah my God. While I was fainting away, I remembered Yahuwah, and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who regard vain idols, and man, like, I don't know if it's a spiritual attack or what it is. If, if you watch my videos, it's like every time I do a video, I'll have an itch. It's normally a nose itch, like just a little itch. And this time I start doing a video and my, my face starts itching. And that's the first time it's it. I've had any itch like that all day. And right when I start doing a video, it happens. So, uh, if uh, anybody's wondering why I keep scratching my face, it's crazy. I descended to the roots of the mountains. The earth with its bars was around me forever. But you have brought up my life from the pit, O Yahuwah my God. 
While I was fainting away, I remembered Yahuwah, and my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. Those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness. Those who have <clears throat> have idols, and an idol can be anything, anything you place over top of God or make more important than God or place more focus on than God can be an idol. Those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. That which I vowed, that which I have, have vowed, I will pay. Salvation is from Yahuwah. Then Yahuwah commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah up onto the dry land. So Jonah was dead. And the fish, or whatever uh, kind of sea creature it actually was, vomited Jonah out onto the land, and... Uh, and basically resurrected because he was dead. And uh, like I said, this is similar to what we see here in Revelation 6. When the lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been killed because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained. And they cried out with a loud voice, saying, How long, O, o Lord, holy and true, will you refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who live on the earth? And a white robe was given to each of them, and they were told that they were to rest a little while longer, until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers and sisters who were to be killed, even as they had been, was completed also. So there were Fisio's prayers um, from Sheol, but it's not only that, because at the same time, there's going to be prayers uh, of the living saints going out as well. Prayers of those uh, who are in captivity. And we see this in a lot of the Psalms. And I'm going to just go over to Psalm 18 here real quick. So similar... It's also similar to Jonah's prayer. I'm going to start in verse 4. The cords of death encompassed me, and the torrents of ungodliness terrified me. The cords of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress I called upon Yahuwah and cried to my God for help. He heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry for help before him came into his ears. And that's uh, a picture of the fifth seal. And uh, the sixth seal is right after it. Then the earth shook and quaked. And the foundations of the mountains were trembling and were shaken because he was angry. And we actually see the prayers of the dead and the prayers of the living right here. Like I said, there's going to be the prayers of... Uh, the saints that we read about in Revelation chapter 6. And then there's the prayers of the living as well. Those who are in captivity. And that's why we see here it says, The cords of Sheol surrounded me. This is the dead already in Sheol. And then, that, then right after it says, The snares of death confronted me. These are the living. The cords of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon Yahuwah and cried to my God for help. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry for help before him came into his ears. Hallelujah. And that's when God delivers, just like he did with Jonah. He's going to deliver us. Hallelujah. And we get a picture of that in Jonah, of uh, what's going to happen. The prayer goes out, and then... The resurrection and rapture happens. The, the deliverance. Because uh, Jonah is a picture of the resurrection. He was... Uh, and actually, 
even more than I was thinking about. He's a picture of the re resurrection even more than I was thinking about because, um, because of the three days thing. In Hosea 6, there's uh, three days between... See, I don't have it all figured out yet, but uh, between... Um, let me just go over to Hosea 6 and and read the scripture and show you what I'm talking about. But uh, there's a, or actually it's on the third day, but uh, so maybe it's a little different. But at the end of, end of Hosea 5, we see here. God says, For I will be like a lion to Ephraim, and a young lion to the house of Judah. Yes, I will tear to pieces and go away. I will carry away, and there will, there will be no one to rescue. I will go away and return to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, they will, they will search for me. And then uh, Hosea 6 starts with, Come, let us return to the Lord. For he, he has torn us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. He will revive us after two days. He will raise us up on the third day that we may live before him. So on the third day, that's when, uh, I believe that's when, uh, at least when the rapture happens, maybe the resurrection as well. Um, and this is going to be the main rapture. The 144,000 is before, beforehand. Either at the beginning of the three days or beginning of the last ten. I haven't, uh, I'm not exactly sure. But, uh, as the end of Jonah chapter two. Um, Lord willing, we'll do chapter three tomorrow. Either that or, or another Another, uh, we got to finish First Corinthians or both, uh, whatever God leads me to do today. He led me to do, uh, Jonah chapter two. So whatever he leads, whatever he leads me to do. So, uh, let's be ready, brothers and sisters. Let's walk in all his ways. Let's serve God with all our heart. Let's be, let's be ready. It's only a matter of time until everything goes down. Short matter of time, we got to be ready, we got to be right with God. You know, it's if it's not this year, it's uh in the next couple years, everything is going to go down. I mean, it's there's God has a timeline, God has a timeline, and we're at the end of that timeline, and it's either this year. 2024, 2025 at the very, very latest is uh, my understanding of it. That would be the very latest. But, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's, all, it's all on God's timing, but he has a, he has a timeline and, and his word is true. His word will be fulfilled in its time. Right now, he's just delaying. He's having mercy. So more people will be saved. So more people will be right with him. So let's make sure we're right with him. Let's make sure we're preaching the gospel. Let's, uh, whatever God's calling us to do individually. S some of us, I mean, we're not all evangelists. And I'm not, I'm not good, I'm not good at talking to people in person or anything. Um, God, I'm, I'm really not a, outward going person I'm I'm pretty much a quiet person but God has me do these videos and the the quiet guy doing the videos uh, my uh I used to have uh I mean I, w I don't want to say my nickname or anything but uh back in it was middle school I played football, and it was for, like, the, the local like, county league or whatever. And um, on our uh, 
the at the end of the year the coach gave us certificates and gave us all a nickname on our certificates and mine was uh oh well, if anybody doesn't know my real name my real name is isn't isn't Larry Newport that's pretty much like a stage name for uh for it's it's my rap name it's it's my music name and it's the name I use for YouTube and uh a couple of my emails and different stuff like that but but it's uh but my government name is uh Josh my name is Josh Cooper and um so my nickname that the that the coach gave me was uh Josh talk a lot Cooper because I was so quiet and I've you know I've always kind of been like that but God uses the quiet guy to get on here and do hundreds of Bible studies. It's uh, <laughs> because it's him. It's him, not me. It's him working. I'm just a vessel. Praise God. Praise God for his mercy. Praise God for his uh, His power, his, his spirit. Hallelujah. And not that I don't talk to anybody I, I mean I'm just not I'm just not good at uh I'm just not good at sparking up conversations I guess and um I mean what we all have different gifts we all have different personalities and uh but God will you God will use us in whatever he whatever way he sees fit all glory to him, praise God. But uh but let's preach the gospel. Whether that's online, whether that's through gospel tracks, whether that's one on one in person, whether that's through videos, whatever whether that's to family members, whether that's to people at work, whether that's to random people. You know, my uh it's funny because my granddad and and I'm gonna end a video here in a second. But my granddad is is like the bit like uh, the opposite of me when it comes to that. He uh, he'll spark up a conversation with any stranger, and it's uh <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of funny. But uh but anyway. Let's just do whatever God's calling us, to, calling us to do. We're all different parts of the body. We're all different members of the body of Christ. He is the head. We are the body. And we all have something to do, whether that's praying for people, whether that's uh, supporting someone else. We're all in it together, and no one is better or more, more important than anyone else. You know, someone could, uh, someone could be, uh, have a huge... Uh, Opportunity or huge following, uh, someone could be preaching the gospel to the, the whole world, but that person isn't going to be isn't any better than uh, someone who's just someone who's just praying for somebody or just uh, helping in different situations and stuff. No one's no one's more important than the other. We're all a part of one body. We all we all support one another, and um, we're all brothers and sisters. We're all family, and uh, Jesus said. The people, everyone will know that you are my brethren by the love that you show one another. So we need to make sure we're showing love to one another. This is what it's all about. It's what it's all about. It's two two most important commandments are to love God and love our neighbor. All the rest of the law, all the rest of God's commandments hang off of those two, are based on those two. And uh, let's forgive our enemies. Let's uh, love our enemies. Let's, uh, God is the judge. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. We need to let him be the judge. Let him do what he, do what he sees fit. But we, we, need, we need to have love in our heart. We need to wish that everyone will come to repentance and eternal life. Because that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. You know, uh, there's a lot of people going to be destroyed soon. A lot of people are going to be destroyed permanently soon. And, um, I mean, it's, it's hard to even imagine, but it's, it's, it's reality. A lot of people are going to die soon. And, um, 
the judgment of God is coming to this world. World War Three is going to break out. It's uh, it's going to be horrible. There's going to be a I'm talking about catastrophic. I'm talking about the end of the world, and uh, it's going to be really bad. And so we need to preach the gospel. We need to we need to warn the people. Like it's about to happen tomorrow. And and I guess I'm saying that more to myself than to you guys because uh I don't know, maybe I don't have a, as much of a sense of urgency as I should. Because we know it's soon. And we don't know when exactly. But uh it's only a matter of time until everything goes down. Let's walk in all his ways. Let's serve him with all our heart. Let's be ready. Let's, uh, let's do all we can for the kingdom. Whatever he's calling us to do, we're only vessels that he can work through. Hallelujah. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to him today. We're living in the last days. There's not much time left. The Bible tells us about all this pretty much all the stuff that's going on in the world right now. It's all, all everything the Bible says is going to happen right in, right in the end times. Uh, at, at the time that Jesus comes back, or during the tribulation time. See, Jesus is going to come on the clouds for his people. With the wrath of God, he's going to save his people from, from the destruction. A quarter of the world is going to be destroyed. And from the ashes, it's going to rise up uh, the final beast kingdom, the final antichrist kingdom, which will last, uh, it'll be a total of seven years after that point. And then Jesus is going to come back at the end of the seven years and set up his kingdom here. But, uh, But it's uh, it's about to be really bad. A lot of people are going to be killed when everything happens. But you have an opportunity to be saved. Um, see, most people are going to die this first death and then die the second death. In a lake of fire, death of body and soul. And it's sooner than we all think. And a God that gives you an opportunity to live and... And even more here, us and us living in this final generation. God chose us all to live, live here in this final generation, and have an opportunity to not even die once. There's going to be a lot of people that are uh, raptured when Jesus comes on the clouds, that are taken straight from this life into eternal life, into into His kingdom, and and then we'll come back with Him at the end of the seven years to reign here with with him on this earth for the thousand year millennial reign of Jesus Christ before eternity and um, see like I said most people are going to die twice in the first death and the second death on the lake of fire but uh, a lot of people are going to be able to aren't going to die not even going to die once God is gracious if you would just choose him, and you have that opportunity. Of course, it's up to God what, who dies his first death or not. But God gives you an opportunity to to be free from the second death. And um, to be free from the lake of fire. To have eternal life with him. See, God requires perfection in order to enter his kingdom. And none of us are perfect, so we can't earn it. We can't earn our way to eternal life. We can't earn our way to the kingdom of heaven. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, lived a perfect life. He did nothing wrong. And even though he did nothing wrong, he stood in the place for us. To take on the punishment for us. To take on that death for us because sin requires death. And it's supposed to be us, but he died on the cross for us to take that death. And because we can't earn it ourselves, it's not through works, it's through faith. 
is through faith in what he did. And that's how we receive forgiveness of sins. He died on the cross for our sins, to pay the debt for our sins, to take on the death that we deserve. And, and if you believe that, if you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose from the grave, from the tomb three days later, and offers you eternal life through that, and you call out to him to forgive you, forgive you for your sins, to change you, to save you, he will. He'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit, which will help you walk on a straight and narrow path, which will help you understand the Bible, and which will help you, um, the Holy Spirit will transform you. God gave me the Holy Spirit when I gave my life to Jesus. He gave me the Holy Spirit and transformed me overnight. I was a different person overnight. Not the same. I don't want to be the same. I'm living for God. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. But God will give you the Holy Spirit. He'll forgive you. And he'll give you eternal life and bring you into his kingdom. The Bible says we can't even imagine the things that God has prepared for those who love him. We don't. It's, it's going to be incredible. His kingdom has streets of gold. Transparent streets of gold. It just, just We can't even imagine. I'm talking about a city 1,500 miles high. It's a, <laughs> we can't even imagine how it's really going to be and what God has prepared for us. It's going to be incredible. But, uh, you just got to accept the sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus said, he who believes and who is baptized will be saved. And baptize, the baptism is just a, it's an outward expression of your faith. It represents dying to your old self and, rep, and uh, being raised up in a new life in him. And... Uh, it would be the most important decision you ever made in your life. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or a change of mind. Deciding to turn to God. Deciding I'm done with my sin. I'm done with my old life. I'm turning to God for salvation. I'm turning to him for the forgiveness of my sins. That's repent. Repent and believe in the gospel. So what he did for us on the cross. Give your life to Jesus. We're living in the last days. He'll give you eternal life. He'll... And God will help you and be with you and protect you and, and guide you every step of the way. And you have brothers and sisters who are... I'm here. You have other brothers and sisters in the faith that'll be right there for you. We're all a family. It's uh, It's all love. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.